So um, now we come to the last of the use case classifications. And remember, we'll just divide them into three just to give you a breathing room, because you're bored already, are you not? Uh, we don't have uh, too many more slides, and then you can relax and um, listen to a different MOOC with a different speaker so you don't get so bored by my toneless voice. So let's go for it. Four more to go, I thought maybe five. Okay. Here we have classification, which is, uh, so we, as I pointed out, um, many of the use cases, I think it was around 20, involves classification of some sort. And here I'm using it in the very broadest terms. Search classifies documents by the nearness to your query. Uh, recommend our systems classify items by the relevance to your interests. So these are so I'm using the word classify in the English sense, possibly not in terms of a computer science sense. When you do network science studies, you study communities um, and how the, the you know, how the internet links people together through friends on Facebook or or websites they access into like-minded folks. So that's uh, classifying people into communities. Biologists classify sequences by their role, what they, what, uh, what the disease that particular gene is associated with, and also to the uh, biological family and species and genera to which they belong. Um, machine learning, uh, M, which is a cl another important classification, effectively implements classification in several ways. So there's things like support vector machine, device data into region using planes, clustering device the data into groups where the members of each group are near each other. Notice clustering's unsupervised learning as there's no input as to categories. Collaborative filtering is essentially supervised um, learning as it uses existing rankings to predict new rankings. Learning networks typically uh, use existing classifications, although there are also unsupervised, which is discussed in use case 26, unsupervised learning networks. But supervised learning networks um, take a set of training data, which are class which where the answer's known, and uses a whole set of data with known answers to train a neural net, which then can uh, use, take a, a case where the answer's not known and give you the right answer. So classification is very important. So we've done a bunch of uh, other features, the features, and um, we bet that there are a couple we haven't done uh, directly. One is Monte Carlo, uh, which is the generation of random data that mimics observed data. And as I mentioned earlier, it's used to quantify analysis by uh, testing the method and determining their efficiency. And in particle physics, the, the Monte Carlo data is actually needs uh, competitive with the observed data. Um, that's partly because uh, you're trying to find efficiency when you observe the Higgs. You want to find out the properties of the Higgs. So you look and see what the Higgs does. Well, maybe you're at, you know, remember these, although the, your apparatus cost whatever it did, $50 million. Well, probably, that's probably an underestimate. Um, it's still not perfect. And there are certain particles that you do not observe very well. And so certain decay modes of the Higgs you don't actually observe very well. So you find out how well you observe um, each decay mode using Monte Carlo, and you then use that Monte Carlo to take the observed rates and then correct them for the events you would, you would miss. And you find out very straightforwardly what the probability of observing a particular Higgs is in a particular mode, you just generate that Higgs in a Monte Carlo in the types of events which are similar to the ones observed, and you run that, that Monte Carlo data through the entire software from beginning to end. And then you just ask how many of those events you found and how many you missed. That's very straightforward. 
but it requires a lot of Monte Carlo data because uh, to get accurate answers because um, um, you're effectively dividing by it. And if you have a small number divided by it, it can produce you big errors. So you, you want to, to get an accurate answers for efficiency, you tend to need a lot of Monte Carlo data. We already stressed streaming and the Apache projects, DOM, S4, and SAMHSA. And obviously, uh, when um, I go to uh, e commerce uh, site and um, I, can, they can be, I can be thought of as streaming, if Sam the first time I've ever been to that site, they won't know anything about me. But they can still do a useful job on me by uh, doing an algorithm appropriate for such a new user who is added to the information uh, calculated in batch mode from all the previous users. Um, if we go to particle physics, you could think, well, maybe we do streaming for that type of case, because we have events, each event is produced uh, one after another, because the um, accelerator keeps on chugging away, and uh, each event corresponds, uh, although there's maybe hundreds of events at each, each time the accelerator <coughs> collides. Um, that. Uh, they are effectively individual events that you can analyze separately. And, um, but it's not really the same because uh, you don't actually analyze data event at the time when, in uh, use case uh, 39. Rather, you take a lot of data from a so called run. You know, you, you, you're, you're doing a physics experiment. You have your apparatus, you love and you get the apparatus running. And then you have the accelerator, you love and you get the accelerator running. And then you do this, uh, and you run, then you take some data. And that's the run. And that run will have its own special features, and its own calibration. And you need to do a correlated analysis of all the data to be able to efficiently use that. Um, um, Data, and you know, you usually have to put in some tools. When I did this work, we had to fix the software for particular runs because it had some something was broken or something was not quite right, and things like that. So the stream model that's a sort of then we have an incremental model. We take one run and add a new run, but each of those runs is a large amount of data, so it ends up not being like streaming. 